Today, I am on a mission to tear down my Corvette's LS7. I want to find out why it blew up at the racetrack and to see if this $20,000 motor is destined for the junkyard or if there's any chance that the block can be saved. Every car has weak spots and thanks to the internet they're usually pretty well known. In the case of the C6 Corvette Z06, go to any auction on Bring a Trailer and check out the comments. I'll guarantee you that the first question is always, have the heads been fixed? Getting the heads fixed is shorthand for paying a shop a couple thousand dollars to rework the cylinder heads on the mighty LS7 motor to prevent it from dropping an exhaust valve. When this happens, the valve snaps off the stem and falls into the cylinder where it bounces around like a titanium wrecking ball, destroying the cylinder head, the piston, and the aluminum engine block in the process. Debate has been raging for more than a decade about what causes this and how likely it is to happen, but all you need to do is read the comments on my last Goldie video to know that there are a lot of stories out there about trashed LS7s. Like any enthusiast, I was aware of this when I bought the car, but the thing about the internet is that it has a tendency to blow things out of proportion. So even though I planned to get Goldie's heads fixed eventually, it was easy to keep putting it off. I kept putting it off for months, and then I blew the engine at the track. But did Goldie drop an exhaust valve? Or did she starve for oil and spin a bearing? Or was there some other mystery failure? I think it's time we take it apart and find out. Goldie is back in the garage, and so the time has come to dig in and see if I can figure out exactly what went wrong and how extensive the damage is. I think that oil that we saw dripping out of the front of the car at the track actually came out of the intake. Engine oil dripping out of the intake is a clue that our problem is related to the valve train. The first step is going to be taking off the valve covers so we can visually inspect for any obvious signs of failure like a broken valve spring or a rocker. I bought a tool cart specifically to help stay organized while I'm working on projects. And it's always a good idea to have a friend help out if you have one available. Next we're going to disconnect the spark plug wires from the ignition coils. We need to get the ignition coil brackets removed. And finally, there are just a few bolts holding on the valve cover. With the valve covers off, I looked at all the springs and rockers, but I didn't notice anything that was obviously out of place. So the next part of the plan is to try to look inside the cylinders through the spark plug holes, which means that the spark plug wires need to be removed. Time to remove a spark plug. With one of the plugs removed, I get to try out the inspection scope I bought off of Amazon for $26. It uses a Wi-Fi connection to broadcast to an app on your smartphone, which is a handy feature because it makes it easy to record footage and text it to your proctologist. I've seen this done on YouTube videos and I assumed it would be easy, but I have realized it's not. Getting the camera into the cylinder is easy, but maneuvering it so you can look around is not as simple as it sounds. The first cylinder I looked at was number three and it looked fine, so I moved on to number five. The spark plug threads looked a little rusty, which is a sign that there has been water or coolant in the cylinder. 
At this point, I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but as I look at the footage now, it definitely looks like there is some scoring on the cylinder wall and there is coolant in the cylinder. I went back and looked again later and saw a vertical line that appeared to run the length of the cylinder, which I assumed was extremely bad news. The block might be cracked. But I still don't have any idea what happened. After the other cylinders on the driver's side looked okay, I moved over to the passenger side hoping to find some better clues. And on cylinder number six, I found a big clue. Oh. The spark plug's tip had been smashed. So I was very curious to see what we could find with the scope in cylinder number six. And honestly, it didn't look quite as bad as I was expecting. The top of the piston was beat up, but it seemed to be intact. There was scoring on the cylinder wall that was much worse than cylinder number five. I could see part of a valve that was still intact, but I couldn't tell whether it was the intake or exhaust valve. So the nature of the failure was still a mystery, and I was feeling really bad that the block was cracked. Well, this inspection scope turned out to be a good investment. Unfortunately, we didn't get any good news. It looks like this engine is completely trashed. It's gonna have to come out of the car. Before that though, I still want to investigate and try to figure out exactly what happened, and that means the cylinder heads need to come off. I probably should have disconnected the battery before I got started, but it's dead anyway, and better late than never. We need to get everything off the top of the motor, so we're gonna start with the air intake. And just as I suspected, it is coated in oil. One thing I've learned over the years is that cleaning as I go and staying organized helps keep the workspace tidy, keeps my motivation up, and really pays off in the long run. Because if you don't stay organized, eventually the mess starts to get in your way and it slows you down. Well, I'm still searching for clues and I'm wondering if there are any hidden in this air intake. Nope, it's just very oily like I expected. And slowly but surely, we're making our way towards the intake manifold. Wow, this intake is just swimming in oil and coolant, neither of which are supposed to be in there. Next up, we need to get the fuel rail off, and to do that, we gotta disconnect the fuel line. For that, you need a special tool, and I've also got some silicon plugs I'm gonna use to plug the line. I got this bag of assorted silicon plugs when I was working on my brakes and they have come in really handy. Uh oh. Do you wanna get a handful of gasoline? Because this is how you get a handful of gasoline. I guess it's finally time to retire the disposable work gloves I've been using since February. To get the fuel rail off, we've got to disconnect all the wires for the fuel injectors.
Then we've got a bunch of bolts attaching the fuel rail to the intake manifold. There's nothing like the terror of hearing a fastener drop down into the engine bay, followed by the relief when you hear it hit the ground. And now we're ready to get the intake manifold off. That's a lot of coolant in the intake manifold. I was wondering why I was smelling coolant at the track. Now we know. And just so we're clear, I do not blame Richard K. McBride for my engine blowing up. It's not your fault, Richard. You know, it's been almost six weeks since Goldie's motor blew, and it's been tough to get the motivation to get started on this teardown in part because I'm starting to enter territory where I really don't know what I'm doing and that's intimidating. But the bigger reason is because I feel like an idiot for letting it happen in the first place. So this part of the project is kind of like being forced to do an autopsy on a patient you accidentally killed. I guess it's easy to feel like you just wanna quit, but I think we all make mistakes, big ones and small ones, and you have to forgive yourself even for the big mistakes. You learn from it and you move on. You know, what else can you do? You can't change the past. And I really honestly believe that in the end, Goldie is going to turn out to be a better car than she would have been if this had never happened. So yeah. So at this point I wasn't entirely sure what to do next, so I went ahead and disconnected the wiring from the alternator. Then I decided to remove the valley cover just in case I could see anything, but I couldn't see anything. That turned out to be a waste of time. The bolts for the exhaust manifold looked a little rusty, so I hit them with the PB blaster. Directions say you should then let it sit for a few minutes, but who's got that kind of time? Now I think you could get the cylinder heads off without removing the exhaust manifold, but I think there might be some treasure hidden in there, so they're coming off. Now my quick jacks are super handy and I trust them. I do wish they would get the car a little higher off the ground and I think newer models than mine do get you a few extra inches, but man, every time I crawl underneath the car, I can't help but imagine what it would be like to get crushed to death. I can't be the only one, right? Ugh. <laughs>
I can't figure out how to get the header out. It doesn't seem to want to come up from the bottom or down from the top. And it's actually the cat and the header are two different pieces, but I can't really see how to reach the bolts that hold them together. But it's out of the way so I can remove the head and then I should be able to pull it out. It is time to inspect the damage. If you guessed broken exhaust valve, you guessed right. All right guys, I think we've identified the culprit. This is the exhaust valve for cylinder number six. And I think what happened is the infamous dropped exhaust valve issue where this valve snapped off, fell into the cylinder, rattled around doing a bunch of damage. And then in this case, I might've gotten a little bit lucky because it made its way out of the exhaust. I found it next to the catalytic converter. Here's another piece of shrapnel that I found but there are pieces missing. I suspect one of those missing pieces might have made its way over to cylinder number five and it cut the cylinder liner. These cylinders are sleeved and in theory, if the sleeve got cut badly enough, that would allow coolant to get into the cylinder, which might mean that my theory that the block is cracked is wrong and all that's really wrong is that those cylinder sleeves got cut up. If the cylinder sleeves can be replaced, then maybe the block is salvageable. I don't know, I'm not an expert. I haven't researched this to find out if that's even a possibility, but I guess it stands to reason. Hopefully you guys will let me know in the comments. So next time we're gonna dig in a little bit further. We're gonna see if we can assess the rest of the damage and hopefully we'll be able to come up with a plan for moving forward. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thanks for coming along for the ride. We'll see you next time.